So, Professor Audi, it's uh, great to have you with us. Um, thank you for coming uh, all over all the way from the U.S. I'm happy to be here, and I've been enjoying the discussions. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, so today we've got some time to explore um, uh, all sorts of philosophical issues related to the university. And um, so the first question I wanted to ask you is, what do you consider to be the primary intellectual or epistemic responsibilities of the university nowadays? We're going to talk about more than intellectual responsibilities, sure, yeah. but I'd start with something from the philosopher Bertrand Russell, who was a wit. He said, education has an essentially twofold purpose, to develop the mind and to train the citizen. And he added, the Athenians concentrated on the former, the Spartans on the latter. <laughs> the Spartans won, he said, but the Athenians were remembered. Well, both are essential, mm -hmm. and as I see it, the intellectual function is indeed to develop the mind, but that is not just a matter of method. There are also requirements of content, so there's a methodological side and a contentual side. Philosophy contributes especially on the methodological side. In computer terminology, we try to develop the central processing unit to strengthen its capacities. But there are some basic texts of great importance and value, and there is history, and of course there are the sciences generally. So universities have a responsibility to convey important subject matters and to develop the capacity to deal with those subject matters and to apply what is learned to new materials and new problems. And so how do you think these, um, these intellectual or epistemic responsibilities relate to um, what is often considered to be another primary responsibility of the university, namely to work on character formation, as, as Martha Nussbaum, for instance, has argued? Well, I've mentioned citizenship yeah, as mentioned. something very important in development of persons for democracy, which requires citizenship if, if it is to succeed. As to formation, we get students at universities whose character is largely formed. So I think it can be developed and enriched, but the term formation suggests a little more malleability and a little more need for structuring than there may be, especially if pre-college education goes well. So I'm leery of speaking of a university as having a responsibility for character formation, but certainly character is important, and I think that here values come to the fore, and we do not have to be value neutral. Right, yeah, so that's, that's another thing I wanted to ask you about. So it's often thought that universities should, in a sense, be value-free. Um, then, of course, it's hard to run a university without embracing certain values. So do you think there is a sense in which universities ought to be value-free or should, should embrace certain values? And how do you think that relates to there being religious schools and religious universities? A religious university is entitled to favor a religious outlook, but it shouldn't do so without adequate critical skills and attention to alternatives. Mm -hmm. A secular university should be religiously neutral, which doesn't entail being hostile toward religion, but it does entail not preferring one religion over another, uh, at least not directly. One might uh, indirectly prefer a religion that treats males and females equally without actually addressing any particular religion that doesn't do so. That already indicates that there are moral values that are objective and sound, and there's no reason to be neutral toward them, nor can we realistically be neutral toward them. But there are also epistemic values that have to do with the evaluation of ideas, hypotheses, and theories, and a university can't be neutral there, and we have to hope that we get clarity and greater and greater depth on the methodological side and on the side of critical thinking. I also wanted to um, explore um, university education a little bit more with you. Um, mm -hmm. So do you think there are certain questions, so big questions of life 
that all university education should address. So no matter what subject matter you're studying as a student, those are questions that ought to be addressed at some point in your curriculum. Presumably students should develop a kind of world view through university education. And they should do it in their own way, but there are good and bad ways to do it. Many would say that we have to present visions of the good life. Others would say a meaningful life will normally be a good one, but a meaningful life doesn't have to be a good one in any readily identifiable sense. Certainly a good life will be meaningful. I'm inclined to argue that there are certain values, for instance, moral and aesthetic, that should have a major place in the university. There are intellectual values having to do with standards of evidence and with how to evaluate ideas and build theories. So these should have a special place. But I'd add one more thing. This is a world in which there's a lot of work to be done. And I think we know that people are not happy if they don't have meaningful work. So I think the capacity to identify and enjoy meaningful work is crucial for university education. Philosophy contributes distinctively there. It's not only interdisciplinary, but metadisciplinary. It views the other disciplines from different angles and at a higher level. And it helps people to see the meaningfulness of a multitude of possible tasks so that it's good training, not just for any job one might happen to get, but for change of jobs, which is very characteristic of modern life. People have to know how to shift gears, to transition, to use their capacities to do different sorts of work. So those are among the things I'd stress. There are many others. All right. Um, one final thing I wanted to ask you is um, that um, the university seems to be uh, facing quite a few challenges now nowadays, for instance, when it comes to plagiarism or fraud or economic pressure. Um, so what do you think are the main threats that the university faces nowadays and what are the main opportunities it has in our societies? Well, I would say the power of the internet has grown almost exponentially in recent years and its influence has grown and I think that there is a danger to universities of people's expecting images to provide more information than they do. There's often an expectation that complex matters can be boiled down. There's a tendency to want a one-line summary of an important matter. So we have to avoid oversimplification. We have to avoid demands for narrow success in one vocation, financially, um, in something of wide public interest. So universities have to develop critical thinking and a tolerance for intellectual discipline, a resistance to demagogues and one-liners. This is an enormous challenge. And uh, the harder times are economically, the more parents and the public demand vocational training, which can actually interfere with vocational success, ironically. We should be training the mind and developing citizenship capacities, and that requires concentration on basics and emphases on methods that are neutral between alternative vocations. All right. Well, thank you so much. That was thank you. I enjoyed it.